There's one. Let us go roll it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Get in here. Get in here. <laughs> Folks, little spitterbait bass right here at Roosevelt Lake. We're here during the fall, man, and I'll tell you what, a lot happens, but we have the issue with the full moon. With the full moon, we got out here a little later. I figured, well, you know, we could get out a little later, maybe the afternoon bite will kick in a little better for us. But there's a little breeze on the water with a little bit of breeze, you know, it's always fun. I like to start out with something fast down the bank and just cover some water a little bit, see what's going on, try to figure the fish out and see what they want. And one of the, my favorite things to do is chunk a spinnerbait. And, you know, spinnerbaits are a lot of fun to throw. This one here happens to be a blue, bait, blue blade with the small willows on it. And uh, it's got one chrome. This is made by Persuader. It's one of their brand new baits out on the market. And uh, I've liked blue blades, but this one here is really sharp. It's just a real small profile for those smaller shad threadfin shad that they're chasing. Remember this time of year, these fish are gonna start schooling up and chasing these shad. So it's your job to find out where they're at. You know, this time of year, they're all over the place. They could be in the backs of cuts, alongside. A lot of times you're spooning them. You could spoon them in 25, 30, 40 foot of water. And you just gotta find out what, what pattern works best for you. But a lot of times how I generate what I'm doing a lot of, is off a cold front or off fronts coming through. So if we have a cold front, I know it's gonna knock those shad a little deeper. You're not gonna see so much surface action. So you wanna take stuff that you might slow roll or get in the middle of the cuts and try to catch them that way, maybe spoon, things like that. And then uh, on beautiful days, you know, you should be able to go down the bank and hopefully start seeing them busting shad. And it's a timing thing too, because we have a full moon and so you might catch some fish right off the bat in the morning and then it, it seems to taper off or, or uh, you know, slow down until about 11 o'clock or something like that, then the bite picks back up. But a lot of the mistakes that people make is they think that everything has to be caught in the morning and at night. Believe it or not, fish will eat throughout the day. So you can catch them throughout the day, even on reaction baits. And that's something we're throwing here, just trying it, going down the bank and covering some water. You know, the one thing about I love about spinner baits is you can throw it up around this brush and with that clothes pin effect that they have on them, you don't get hung up as much in the brush with these things. So it's almost like, and what I mean by clothes pin, you can see how the wire covers the hook, okay? We've got the grub on there today. That way they smash it really good. I love that. It looks like a little fish in the water. I've always liked that grub. There's times not to use it. If you're smallmouth fishing, a lot of times I probably won't throw the grub on. But here's the deal. Um, you can bring this bait right through the brush piles like this, and I mean right through it. And a lot of times the fish are sitting right in the brush pile, they'll come out of that brush pile and hammer it. So here I am throwing it right in the middle of the brush, and it'll just come through there without getting stuck. I love that. That bait, that's what makes the spinner bait so much fun to go down the bank with, because you can really throw it in the junk, you know, and still catch some fish. But, uh, you, you know, this time of year, you want to cover all of it, all of it, you know, from the points all the way back into the cut. So you're just putting your trolling motor on medium or whatever and just covering water. There he is, right on the bank. <laughs> you get up the backs of these brush piles, man. Just work your way to the back. He's not as big as the last one, but it is a spinnerbait bass. <laughs> Look at this fish. <laughs> Oh my goodness, come here, come here, you're done. You're done. Oh my goodness, they'll tear up that. You gotta really be careful with the light wires, but that's what you want. Little guy, we'll throw him back. When, you're, when your line does this, when you catch a fish, do you retie? What do you think? Look how the line's melted right there, okay? It's a good idea to break off, retie. Never let those curly cues right there, like you see, that's melted line. Always break off and retie. Otherwise, you're gonna get your heart broke. <laughs> oh, there's a good one right there, son. He slammed it. <laughs> That's a good fish right there. Big old spinnerbait bass. He's coming up. 
Oh! <laughs> you don't allow that to happen in tournaments, folks. <laughs> but you gotta see that fish. Look at the monster. Look at that monster. Oh my goodness, get over here, son. <laughs> Come on, let's get you to the boat on that persuader spinner bait. He wanted it, that light wire, that light wire. I think I got him hooked pretty good. I think I got him hooked pretty good. Yeah, look at that, folks. <laughs> look how he tore my spinner bait up. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> That's a Roosevelt Lake spinner bait bass. I love it. That's a beautiful fish. Oh my goodness, let's let him go. Covering water, just covering water. You know, we lost our wind a little bit, but with the rocks and everything here, it just looks good. You can catch fish even when it's not windy on a spinnerbait. That's proof of it right there because the wind laid down on us. And I was just thinking about going to something else and I'm like, you know, I gotta cover this bank and just see what happens. Look how he tore that light wire up. Light wire, you get more vibration out of your bait, number one. The other reason why I like to use this particular blade pattern, the smaller blades like this. Now, what's really cool is you can bend these things back and uh, get it back in shape. Make sure that the arm is over the, the hook. But I'm using the, the little blades. You don't ha have near as much resistance when you throw it out there so it throws like a bullet number one number two is it's about the size of those little shad that i'm seeing on the surface so that's perfect and it allows the bait to, to, when you're slow rolling it to get down there a little deeper quicker if you had bigger blades on here it'll lift the the bait up so having the smaller blades allows the bait to get down there and bump the rocks a little bit and that's what you want to do i'm just slow rolling it i'm using a 17 pound test line and I'll tell you what, that's that XPS Bass Pro line. And uh, I'll tell you, it, that, that's the ticket right there. A little 3 8 ounce Persuader, brand new on the market with that little blue blade. These Willow Leaf blades put off a maximum flash. And I've talked about this before, but if I was in real muddy water, I'd want to go with a Colorado blade. You know, it looks more like a shell, you know, the Colorado blade does. And what happens is, is you'll get more thump, more vibration out of the Colorado blade than you will this particular blade. This blade pattern here gives off more flash and when you have the sun high and you got a little bit of wind, it just puts off a lot of flash. Got him. Got that one. That's a good fish. Oh, he hit like he was a monster. <laughs> Come on, son. <laughs> Slow rolling that bait off that, off that spot there. Well, catch a lot of these little book bass, but once in a while getting a good one. Sure is fun though. You know, that's another thing to think about too, is you know, we have a high pressure going on right now. You know, everybody says, oh, high pressure, no reaction, you know, until you get the low pressure and then you get the reaction. You can still catch them on reaction. The difference is, is when you have a high pressure, the fish don't want to chase as far. You almost got to hit them on the head. So you're getting that reaction strike out of them. But uh, you know, when it's a low pressure and they're feeding and they're really going after it, they'll follow it for a long time. But in the case of what we're dealing with today, a lot of times you gotta hit them right on the head. It doesn't mean you can't catch them on reaction though. And I think people are getting, uh, your odds are definitely better when you go to worming or things like that if you have a high pressure. But man, you saw the size of the fish we caught. You can catch big fish still on reaction it's just that they probably won't chase as far for it. Come on. There's one. There's one. <laughs> he's, he's not very big, but we got one. <laughs> right off that point. That's why it's important to fish all of it. Oh, you're not too bad. You'll work. All right, come on. You're done. Ah, I got you. <laughs> that little bait right there. 
catching more little ones than big ones, but still we're getting bit. And it's a lot of fun to cover some water, see if we can get another big one. You know, if you are catching a big one every so often, it's still worth throwing. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta chunk and wind it a little bit. You know, the other thing about throwing this particular style of bait, spinner bait, and you'll see me every once in a while, if I'm not around the, the bushes or hitting anything or ricocheting it off, a lot of times I can make those blades twitch just by either a snap of the reel real quick by, you know, with the reel, just make it, you know, good half turn or full turn real quick, or I can stop it and twitch it and it looks like it hits something and the blades kind of flare on it. And a lot of times they'll hit that. It, that's if you're not hitting any trees or, oh, I just got bit right there. <laughs> and that's the deal. You change the speed and you got an opportunity to catch fish, you know, or you do something different, have it ricochet off the wood or the rock or whatever. There's one there right off that tree. Little guy, <laughs> well, we'll take him. <laughs> oh, he came off. I let him flip around too much. <laughs> that you don't do in a tournament. We do that so you folks at home can see the fish coming out the water. But you don't want to do that in a tournament. You have a heart attack. Oh, there he is. Oh, little guy. <laughs> That's okay, we'll take him. Just heading down the bank. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on. You're good. Oh, oh, oh. See ya. Catch and release. <laughs> we moved to a different area just to see if maybe these fish are pushing some shad or something back in the backs. All you're doing is covering water, trying to figure out where these fish are at and and I'll tell you, this bait is a lot of fun to cover water with because you can cover a lot of area in a quick time with it. You know, today we're using a medium heavy Taipan, fast action Taipan rod. You gotta use a medium heavy with this kind of bait. You want something with a good backbone, a little bit of tip, but good backbone to set that big thick hook in. That's why I use 17 pound test line. It doesn't have near the stretch. So I use a thicker line, obviously. And then uh, you can see how big that hook is. It's got a pretty good size hook on it, okay? With that size of hook, you need heavy line, you need a stout rod. You don't want a heavy, heavy rod. You want something that's got a little bit of a tip on it so when they, they, they actually open their mouth and, and flare their gills out to inhale the bait, the tip will allow them to get the bait in their mouth. If you have a, you know, a, a real heavy pool cue type rod tip, then uh, the fish doesn't really get a chance to, to inhale the bait good. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, this is something really important to remember when you're throwing a spinner bait. If you ever have a spinner bait that's rolling sideways when you reel it in, you're probably reeling it in pretty fast. You can stop that with the bait. Number one, make sure it's tuned. Make sure it's the, the arm is directly over top of the hook, okay? If it still rolls, what you have to do is bring your, bend your wire down, bend your wire down where you can reel it just a little bit faster. If you keep everything a lower profile like that, bring the arm closer to the hook, you can reel it a lot faster. If you want a slow roll, you can spread the wire and you'll get a lot more thumping action. And when you're slow rolling it, you can feel it down there. And it allows that, but you can't slow, you can't fast retrieve this thing with the arm way up. Cause if you do that, the bait's gonna roll. So you wanna make sure that you bring the, the arm down like so, bend the arm down. Now on these light wires, you don't wanna be bending these constantly, but that, that is a way to be able to fast retrieve. Sometimes when they're chasing shad, you have to burn this thing across the surface of the water, just barely under the surface. And uh, to do that, you wanna make sure that the, the wire is a little bit closer to the hook and you'll be able to burn that bait a little bit without it rolling. That's my tip of the week. You know, a lot of people ask why I put the grub tail on. Um, a lot of times I get a much more ferocious strike from the bass. He, he really hammers that when he sees that tail action. And I'm gonna show it to you here in the water. I'm gonna show you the difference. I'm gonna reel this spinnerbait by where the camera can see it. And I want you to see that tail. If you can see that tail action, that is just 
unbelievable what that tail does for a spinnerbait, okay? Now, I'm gonna take the, the tail off and look how plain and, I mean, not that you won't catch them on it. There's a time they don't like that, that tail on there, but man, I'll tell you, I think the tail makes all the difference in the world. There it is, now you're just concentrating on the blades. A little something underneath, but you get a little action from the skirt, but not near the action I like from the tail. And that's why I like the tail. So a lot of times if they're tracking it and they think it's like a little fish or something chasing shad, I always like to think the blades are like shad and, and the bait underneath it could be a bigger shad chasing them or, or underneath them. Kind of like an A-rig type deal, an Alabama rig where you have all the baits all over. So I'd pretend like these are the shad and, and this is the bigger bait. Well, the bass is always gonna go for the bigger bait, especially with that bigger, longer tail. So, you know, you could dip it in a little chartreuse for the smallies or, uh, you know, when they're chasing the bluegill, things like that. But I think it makes a big difference having that little grub tail on there. Uh, I've noticed that they don't nip it. A lot of times if I throw this bait and I'm just reeling it in, a lot of times I feel the nip, the nip, and a lot of times guys will put a trailer hook on, okay, to, to catch those, those nippers. And uh, if I put that grub on, I really feel that they hit it a lot harder. And that's why I do it a lot of times. Oh, there's one, there's one. That's a little bit better fish. Stay down. <laughs> right alongside that bush. Right alongside that bush. Come on in here, son. Ooh, that's a little bit better fish. <laughs> A little bit better fish right there. A little speeder bee bass. What I did was I brought it right alongside this bush right here. You know what's really cool is you're starting to see the dragonflies come out and there are a lot of them, the blue ones and it makes it great because you're throwing that blue blade. So they might've thought, he might've thought maybe one of them fell in the water right there, who knows? Well, we kind of found out that these fish are kind of getting up in these bushes and the dragonflies are moving in and they're starting to eat those dragonflies a little bit. So that's one of the things that you got to really watch for and key on if you see it happening. A lot of times if you see a fish bubble up there by the tree, boil up on a dragonfly, you can get your spinnerbait in there right away and, and whack one. It's a lot of fun. I've missed a few. But uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun today here on Roosevelt, throwing that Persuader spinnerbait, man, with that little blue blade, I'll tell you. We had a couple of neat, nice fish, but boy, I'll tell you, that was, you know, for as bad a day as it is with the full moon, the high pressure, we still managed to knock a few dead today on that spinnerbait. It does go to show you that you can still catch them on reaction even during that time. Put a little grub on the end of that thing, Grab a couple of these from Persuader spinnerbaits and I'll tell you what, you'll, you'll catch quite a few fish. It's a light wire spinnerbait, 3 8 ounce. You'll have a lot of fun, I promise you. And a spinnerbait is awesome because it's good year round. So it's a great search lure. Thanks for joining us on the show. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>